In this video, we will be learning how to use the more advanced sketch tools in DesignSpark Mechanical. In the last video, we used these basic tools to make simple shapes in DesignSpark. In this video, we're going to look at the more advanced tools and how we use them. So let's get started. I'm going to cover these tools a little bit out of order. I'm going to start with the point tool. So the point is a way of adding a reference point anywhere in your sketch or in your design. Uh, it's, and it's as simple as just finding a location that you want the point and clicking it to place the point. I find this most useful when you're working with curved surfaces, say the sphere for instance, that you have a really hard time if you're trying to align parts to it or use a specific point on the surface because the only point available is the center point of a sphere. So if we're working and trying to align, let's say this cube to some arbitrary point on the outside of this sphere, it's really difficult to do because there are no points there to drag it to. So the easiest way to do this is to go back to our sketch tool. I'll just go back and use our last sketch plane. And we can go in, let me turn off the snap here real quick, and select the point tool, and then we can find any point along a curved line or any point on the sketch at all, and you can add a point to that location on the component. And what that basically does is then when we're back in 3D mode and we want to move uh, this, this solid around, we can change the anchor point um, say of this cube and we can tell it to move up to an arbitrary point either in the design or like we did on this sphere we can align it right to that point on the sphere itself and that makes it real easy to uh, make your components come together exactly the way you want them to be. This point also can be usable when you're doing the move tool. Um, if I go back and select this solid uh, of the cube again remember some of the stuff that you can do is you can do this ruler function and here that point comes in handy again because that's a point you can measure it from you know or you can measure it from the arbitrary point that we put in this uh, sketch on that sketch plane and that makes it so I can point it, make it like exactly some location from a reference point in the sketch so that's the simplest way to use the point tool uh, let's go ahead and get rid of these parts. So we start from a, a clear sketch. The next tool I want to look at is the rounding corner tool. So it's not active here, it only is active after we have some lines. So if I was to make an arbitrary corner in here, the rounding the corner tool is basically just as it says you select a corner and you drag and it makes a rounded corner from it and after it's done the value that is in the box there sets the diameter of that uh, uh, corner so we can change this to say 0.35 inches for instance and it will affect the radius of that bend right and so that rounded corner you can use it on basically any location uh, as long as it's a real corner. This tool can be used to round the edges and make nice smooth surfaces on the loops that you make that you can pull into 3D solid objects. The next tool I want to look at is the offset curve and that name is a little bit misleading because it says offset curve when in fact you can use it for offsetting off of straight lines, curves, arcs, corners, whatever you have selected. Uh, so let me show you that real quick. Um, selecting the tool and then selecting the item that you want to offset uh, allows you to offset that item wherever you want to place it. And you can change the dimensions just like anything else. If I use the control and I add more items, then that makes it so that you can offset more items and, and create um, basically parallel lines here, right? So so I can offset this line by a parallel amount uh, to make, let's say, a sheet metal part, right? If I knew what the thickness, uh, say it was 0.090 uh, thickness metal, um, I could basically make the edge of a sheet metal part that needs to be bent to follow a certain shape. 
This also works on complete circles. So if I draw a circle, uh, you can then go up to the offset tool and select the circle and you can offset it to make it say a piece of pipe or, or a collar of some type. Then remember if we make um, if we make some completed loops here then those uh, complete parts can be used to turn into uh, surfaces to make components from. The next tool I want to show you is the trim away tool. So like in this drawing here where we've got overlaps and we've got partial lines that are sticking out that are of no use, the trim away tool can easily be used to remove those from your drawing. So it's just simply by clicking on it you can select uh, any line or any segment that you want to have removed. And of course Control Z always brings them back, right? If you're using the trim away tool and you don't want to remove an entire line, you can break the line into multiple parts. So let's say this arc right here. If I wanted to remove just a portion of this arc, I could use this next tool, which is called the split curve tool. And basically what it does is it allows you to select a line or a curve and then tell it where you want it to cut. And what it does is it sets a new point on that line and then it allows you to break that line into multiple parts so that you can either remove segments of it or, or add components to it. So that's basically the split curve tool. The last tool up above is the create corner tool. So the create corner tool is a way of extending lines to finish up and make a sealed loop for creating a shape. So if I was to use my trim away tool here, uh, I'll show you a couple things here real quick. you can use the create corner tool to extend lines out and make corners almost anywhere that you want and it can come in really handy here. The thing to be careful of is you might get into a situation like this here that if I'm extending this line it wants to try to create a corner so if I'm coming in, into the middle of another line notice how it shows the red that means it's going to remove that segment of the line so I can get it to remove this segment or that segment depending on where I click on this intersecting line here and then when it creates the corner it removes the parts to actually create the corner here. So you need to be just a little bit careful when you're using this tool as to how it's going to affect or remove other parts of your sketch. The next tool I want to show you is the spline tool. This is probably my favorite tool of the toolbox here uh, because what it does is it allows you to create a flexible line that you can click and you know it's kind of a point-to-point -point, uh, feature that once you complete a line you can either double click or escape so I'll double click here and that finishes the line the neat thing about this is you can go in afterwards and select the line and you can adjust it so it gives you all of these handles uh, that you can adjust the individual points of the spline or you can click spots on the spline and actually move the spots on the spline around. So some of these affect the way that the curve is placed or how it comes off to the end. Like here's a handle at the end that you can change um, the direction that the line ends. And this can be used uh, really well. So say for instance here you can grab this handle and you can make it so that it's parallel with the end of this arc so that it makes a nice smooth transition from this arc to the spline. So this is a way that you can make very interesting shapes, uh, make very interesting surfaces on your components that you make. It also allows you to trace uh, surfaces say on an image for instance. So if I go up to file and I insert an image file, let's say uh, I want to insert my logo here. I can place the logo on my sketch plane here and zoom in on it and I can trace any item on this image and turn it into a shape. Uh, so let's get started on that just to show you. If I position it so that our orientation is right straight above it and we want to get started, I wanted to show you real quick. If I start 
using a three-point circle to go around the outside of this globe right here, we pretty quickly identify that that is not a real circle. So that means our circle tool isn't really going to work very well. And that's where our spline tool can come be the hero because we can start clicking on spots around the perimeter of this circle, right? And when we click it back to itself, that creates the shape, that creates the loop, and then we can edit this loop so that it is aligned perfectly with the edges of this logo and it makes it a not a perfect circle but makes it a representation of what the image is here what that can do for us is make it so that we can make a surface and pull it into a shape that's the exact shape of of this logo we could then use that same method to trace around the F or the P here and create the letters just as they are shown on the image. Then remember, once you have an enclosed loop, you can turn that into a surface that then you can pull into a shape. Now that we've got some solid shapes in our design, uh, let me pull this one surface a little bit more here. I want to show you the next tool here is the face curve tool. So it says sketch a curve on the face of a solid. So this can be a very handy tool. Um, it's a little bit difficult to get exact shapes that you're looking for because there's no grid or no reference point. Uh, but you can select a face. So in this case it's say a the curved part of the cylinder and that basically makes another enclosed loop that you can then pull and make a new shape. So that curve on a face can be used on flat surfaces, curved surfaces, whatever you're looking for. But it's kind of limited because it's not straight lines, it's only curved lines like draw on the spline, right? And it wants to create a closed loop. Uh, once it's done, then you have another surface that you can pull and affect, right? So that's a way that you can modify shapes in 3D mode by using that uh, face curve tool. Now when you're working on making a component, a lot of times you need to start in a new spot and start a new sketch, but you need dimensions from another location. So if I was to pick this as my new sketch plane and I needed to draw something that was at the same level, but I needed reference points from some other part in my sketch, that's where you use this project to sketch tool. So I have this new sketch plane off of this surface of this component. I can use this project to sketch tool to transfer other items onto my sketch plane as lines, circles, or, or arcs. and then those become available for me to use to draw on and connect to to work on adding to my design and then I can use other tools like my trim away tool to remove sections remove sections that are no longer necessary I can use my rounded corner to round corners off so that I don't have any hard edges. And then I can use my pull tool to make this new surface add to the design, tell it not to merge and go down to, we're gonna add um, down to this face here. And that basically makes additions to my component. All right, so there we have successfully made a funky looking component using the more advanced tools, but you can see these shapes would be impossible to make just using the basic tools of drawing circles or squares or arcs or ellipses, right? So that takes care of using the advanced tools to make more complex shapes in DesignSpark. I hope you find these videos useful. If you do, hit the like button and of course subscribe if you haven't yet and ring the bell so that you stay up to date on all my future videos. Thank you for watching.